Were you there on the day when the charges were dropped in Ballarat? Yes, I was with Zoe in the Ballarat Magistrates Court uh, Tuesday last week, uh, and it was a five minute hearing. Zoe is now uh, making, or Zoe's lawyers are now making an application for the costs of the case, the legal costs, uh, but nothing will repay the mental anguish, the stress, the turmoil of these two years. And one of the points is that uh, Zoe had the presence of mind to turn on the video when there was a knock at the door and there were five or six or seven people dressed in black at her door who demanded to be let in. Zoe didn't know who these people were, why they were there, which is, of course, why she turned on the video camera in the first place. But this has happened to dozens and dozens of Victorians and there is still no reckoning for what has occurred. Well, Zoe's the one we know about the best. What effect did those two years have on her? Well, there was the mental anguish. As we know, she was pregnant. Uh, her job applications uh, were put on hold. There was the sword of Damocles hanging over her head. The police confiscated her phones, uh, her uh, means of communications. There were limits on her travel. Uh, the police dragged out the process. No Australian should have a criminal charge over their head for two years like this. Now, COVID uh, did delay the hearings for some months, but there's no reason why this needed to take two years. And we can only suspect and we have ideas as to why the prosecution might have been dropped. One of the comments has been made publicly that this was because we have a state election and no one wants to be reminded of what happened to Victorians and indeed all Australians. Another reason may well be that Zoe's legal team was very prepared to challenge the legality of all of these health orders. And when they were challenged, and th as they would have been in court, I think we would have found that a lot of them were based on very flimsy legal principles and the police did not want to withstand the scrutiny of any lawyer asking how did we go through this and why did we go through this? Well, throughout the lockdown, the police often made the mistake of looking like they were the private army for Dan Andrews' government. And now you're suggesting that the, that the police don't want the bad PR from this case to affect the forthcoming election. It's a fairly close relationship, intimate relationship between government and police, isn't it, John? Well, exactly as you said, Fred, we don't know why, but we can only look at what appears on the surface. You referred to the Black Lives Matter protest. The uh, police and the IPA has written about this the police seem to be supporting some political causes and not others. The police seem to be playing politics. Uh, as you said, uh, some people have called the Victoria Police a once respected and trusted institution, uh, the private army of Dan Andrews and worse, not my words, the words of others. Uh, and this is by no means a healthy state of affairs. 